Oh, preparing to stream. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, we are live. We, now we're live. Okay. Hey guys, <laughs> how are you doing? Welcome to the Tangent Show number 34. 34. Oh my gosh. Oh, are we too low down? No, we're okay. No, we're good. I, I think we're, we're okay. <laughs> I, well, you see, you can't see the zap. Oh, that's so I'm, it. I'm you like saying, to... Yeah. yeah no, we're good. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing very, very well. It is Tuesday. It's 4 p.m. It is California. Barbara is here. Hey, I want to say a really big happy birthday to Barbara Bailey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Barbara. We are so happy to have you in our group watching the show. Um, just kind of being a part of our community. So um, yeah, happy birthday, Barbara. I hope you have a really, really nice day. And it was your birthday this week. It was. <laughs> it was Isaac's birthday week. Happy birthday to you. Oh my you. gosh. Thank you everyone uh, who sent me a birthday message. Um, I uh, I didn't have time to get back to everyone. Well, but that's just thank you. Not, not acceptable, Isaac. I, I gotta, yeah. <laughs> you, you've got to like go and reply individually. To all the, you know, Facebook is like, um, happy birthday. Now you've got to go and talk to everyone. Everyone. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's like very lovely, but it can also be a little bit overwhelming. The, and, the, the Facebook. Yeah. Birthday. I remember 10 years ago when I only had like five friends. Oh, <laughs> it was super easy. <laughs> Those halcyon days <laughs> yeah, of yeah. early Facebook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm doing. I so I I I don't know if I should talk about it, but I I was watching this Facebook marketing challenge thing. Yeah, and the whole thing is. Well, at the moment, it seems to be, and I, I must admit, I'm not paying great attention to yeah. this, but it's like ask questions in groups and make friends with people in groups. And then everyone's like, I got kicked out of a group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of onto that. If someone comes in the group and goes, hey, guys, what are your biggest challenges with making oh books? It's like, oh, I smell a marketer. Oh, my gosh. It's yeah. always fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyway, an um, infestation, they're growing. Well, you know, okay, I, I have no issue with marketing, like, we no, all need to no, market, we, right? We I've market. like made a course no, it's about capitalism marketing. 101. You gotta market, I, I cannot stuff. diss marketing, right? But I kind of wish people may spend more time making things and creating things and innovating and coming up with, yeah. New I mean, I, I feel a lot of the, market. a lot of the sneaky stuff you, you see online is no different than like the guy in like the trench coat, hey, hey. Hey, hey, want to buy some jewelry? You know? Well, yeah, and I, I think that's it. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people are like, it's, it's it's like build an audience, but don't build a product. Like build an audience, then you can sell other people's products, which I get, and I mm -hmm. understand that. But I just, I feel it's kind of like, it's better to put the effort into creating things because then they kind of market themselves. If you like find a way to help people that is genuine and it actually genuinely helps people and it's innovative and it's new which actually isn't that hard to come up with something new um then it tends to market itself is absolutely what i found absolutely. so I, I don't know and the <laughs> other thing is i feel this what's what's just generous without getting too ranty right, right. The only thing I, I, I would say about this is that admins of facebook group i mean if it's a really good group active they spent a lot of time to maintain the quality of that group a lot of time, a lot of time. too much so, time so, yeah a perhaps, lot of perhaps time. too much time um so, yeah. anyway yes i hope you guys were doing really well um jan says first time she made this live and she's not wearing a trench coat so that's probably good. <laughs> um hello Belle. i i'm sorry i probably mispronounced your name but i'm trying um daniel sharon otis renee good i hope you guys are all doing really really well it's so nice to see you here okay um Gosh, we've got a lot to talk about today. There's so much content at the moment because it's it kind of update. coming to the end of the year. And so there's all sorts of um, interesting things being posted. But yeah, we have a surprise mini update. Yes, a tangent, tangent templates. templates update. Okay, so yes. let's talk about that first. So I'm going to share over to tangent templates. So this is kind of like a little update mm -hmm. um, in the planners. Yes, so I finally added dates to our language support for our planners, our daily planners. Uh, we have two daily planners, style one and style two. Yay! Those now support languages. And uh, another thing I did was for the um, the hours, um, you can now uh, set the start hour. Oh, great. Um, so you have a little more customization. I haven't that. played with this yet. Yeah, you You've literally set, put this in uh, yes, this morning. Yes, so. you can oh, set the start. So we can set that for seven. Oh, look, and then it runs seven till 10 instead of yes, like five and till with language support, which is part of the delay, um, we also switch the time format so that you can have AM, PM, or you can put to a 24 hour format. Oh, that's pretty uh, awesome. Which 
Wow, I see. It. So the you've European... got 24 hour or yes. you've got the cool. And you, of course, you can put it in any of the fonts that yes. we have. Yes, and the hours now uh, uh, switch with the font that you select. So it should look more cohesive if you mix these with uh, our yearly or monthly planners. And did you mention the new languages? Yes, I also added two new languages. Two new languages, guys. Uh, Portuguese and Dutch. So, okay, so. so now you can generate a planner. You've got weekly planners, monthly, daily, and the annual uh, page mm -hmm. as well. And you can generate these in um, any language of your choice from English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, <laughs> and Dutch are the yes. ones we've mostly um, been asked for there. So I hope you enjoy the new planners. We are constantly adding to tangent templates. We are constantly um, looking for things to update. We have a long, long list long of list. Um, yeah. requests. So now that little Vember's done, I could start hammering these out much You've quicker. We've got a lot of things we want to add. Yeah. Um, so the key thing with our planners, you can generate them for any date range you like. So mm -hmm. this is a 2020 planner. You can make um, like you can you can make planners that go from like the middle of the year. So a lot of academic planners start in June or July mm -hmm. and then they run through to the next year so they're actually like 18 month planners uh so. yes and so for those of you who don't know if you select the start date this is screen sharing correct mm -hmm. okay um yeah you can uh you can switch the months here you can also switch the months here um and uh the year Cool. So, so there you go. So if you click around, you have a lot of options. Yeah, you can make planners into yeah. the future. Like, and this is kind of nice because if someone's making a planner for next year, they can make another one for the next year as well. And they don't have to worry about it next year. So you can make multiple planners with this, stick them in the listing helper and just change the date on it. And you're pretty much good to go with that. So, yes. so yeah. it, it should be good. If you if you guys encounter any issues, please uh, message me at support at tangent.rocks. Let me know what it is and I will address it and take care of it right away. Beverly says she's learning Portuguese. Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty exciting. That is cool. Yeah, so um, I hope that's helpful to you all. Um, yeah, we, ha we had a lot of requests to translate those. So yay, um, cool. Yes. Um, yeah, we've got more on the way with Tangent Templates. We are working on a lot of things, so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Isaac, for um, the Tangent Template update. Okay, so we can start talking about just news yeah. and um, <laughs> what's going on at the moment in the world of creativity, business, art, technology. Well, what's what's going on with us? Anything? Have we got anything going on? Before I dive into news, um, other than acting, other than we got too much going you've on. You've got to learn your song by, oh by my Sunday. Gosh. Oh. So, guys, Isaac's coming along with his song. He's picked a song. Oh. He's singing it. So, for He's those who don't it. know, uh, if you didn't listen to the show last week, mm -hmm. um, Catherine signed us up for what is the class called again? Oh, I don't know, song and monologue. Song and monologue uh, at, at a, a local playhouse. And um, no, it's the La Jolla Playhouse. Ooh. Ooh. So I've never done any theater studies in my life other than like <laughs> improv, uh, which I don't even know how much that qualifies as like a proper theater studies. Improv is theater. It counts. is, but I, I don't know if it's like proper. <laughs> You're so, gonna be like one of these like late bloomer actors. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't like, know. But suddenly... so we signed up for this class, and I had to learn a musical. I didn't know what to pick. So the teacher picked one for me. Um, it's a corner of the sky by the play Pippin. From the from, from the from the, from the play, play Pippin. Pippin. Yeah. And I'm still learning the song, <laughs> and I'm I'm scheduled to sing this dumb thing, this song on Saturday. Wow. So we'll see how that goes. It's yeah. Find yeah. find you a wife that signs you up for musical theater <laughs> classes randomly <laughs> without telling you. Um, yes. No, I did tell you. No, we did. Yeah. Uh, so okay. It's... All right. Moving on <laughs> swiftly on. Oh, um, I'm I'm over caffeinated. Oh, that's from, good. Oh my gosh, that we got an espresso machine, and it was just the world's worst idea because yeah, I got the jitters. Okay, We're doing um, great. All right, let's start. Uh, what have we got to talk about? Oh yeah, okay. So I wanted to talk about Fiverr. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I know like often people um, when when you're looking to get a job done and you want to outsource something, Fiverr is one of the places you can turn to. And actually, I'm, I know Fiverr gets kind of a bad rap. Like a, a couple of years ago, you made that video about hiring an artist on Fiverr. First to thing to know about Fiverr, nothing is $5 well, that's, Fiverr. That, that's true. So Fiverr, Fiverr started out as um, a five, uh, the idea was that you could get any small job done for $5. Mm -hmm. So you post on Fiverr and say, well, I'll write a poem for you for $5 or I'll draw a picture for you on five for $5. So nowadays it tends to not really be five dollars like no. usually things on fiverr are a bit more than that but honestly i've 
got stuff done on Fiverr when I've been kind of overwhelmed. I've, I've yeah. got tasks done on Fiverr. Um, I tend to prefer other um, like VA platforms, but I've used Fiverr. Um, and actually, I've been pretty happy with the work I've had done on Fiverr. And I think the reason I like it is because it has good feedback. It tells you like how people do with uh, their work and um, how successful they are with their jobs. So you can pretty much see that you're going to get someone who can do the job. But what I noticed is that Fiverr have actually been um, adding a lot of different um, industries and new skills to their platform, which I thought is kind of telling actually about sort of just trends in general. So like, for example, they've added in industries They've added real estate as a new one. Mm -hmm. and they've added influencers, which is kind of interesting. So if you're oh. trying to sort of grow as an influencer, you can actually hire your squad on Fiverr to help you out with your wow. YouTube, with your Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. Um, you can actually hire a team on Fiverr now. And I thought this one was really interesting. Look, Fiverr, That's you can now hire people to put together a political campaign for you. Wow, how much for a flash mob? Um, I actually you can probably put. I, I want a, a fake crowd. Mob. I want to rent a crowd to show the you world. You can rent a crowd. Just yeah. Yeah, you can rent a crowd. You, um, I I don't think Fiverr would necessarily be the best. <laughs> a Craigslist to work for politicians uh, is that, all I'm saying. You know, um, but you can it, hire crowds now. <laughs> but it's pretty interesting that you can do this. You can create like you can get sort of political stuff created. Wow. But I think it's really interesting to look at what's new on Fiverr mm -hmm. because I think this kind of gives you an indication of what industries are growing fast. The zeitgeist. Of, yeah, yeah where things are going. So yeah. social media copy, that's new. Um, case studies, podcast, like case studies, like the big marketing thing at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, white papers, um, like there's so many things. And if we, we move over, we've got public relations, podcast marketing and new ones um video game trailers and animation for streamers so i think this kind of shows how big the twitch and streaming yes. industry is with people playing games professionally yes. which i think is something our kids long to do as a profession <laughs> well it'd be interesting to see how well that goes um and game development as well is uh is new on fiverr you can actually pay people to create games for you which i thought was kind of fun so yeah, there you go. That's um, some oh, celebrity impersonators. Ooh. Whoa, you could have a flash mob of like celebrities. Wow, that's, yeah. Like, whoa, imagine if you could get them all to do the same celebrity. Like you just have like a <laughs> share convention or something. And they're all like waving a flag saying, share loves Tandy Temperate. That would you be know, amazing. That, that reminds me of the quote I heard mm -hmm. of, of Charlie Chapman. He said he went to a Charlie Chapman lookalike, Cha con Chaplin, was it? Chaplin, uh, lookalike contest and won third place. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think I saw them do that with Adele and they did like a, a mock Adele thing and all these girls showed up who looked like Adele, but then actual Adele showed up and the girls all started like catching on. They were like, are you actually Adele? <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> I don't know what it was for. I just remember that. It was funny. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. So Fiverr now have a lot of new services, including your political campaign so nice. that's good to know um yeah you ever thought about running for politics um no i have not oh okay <laughs> i was just asking as yeah, a filler yeah, while yeah. i drink my pellegrino yeah, i'm yeah, not like yeah. not my cup of whiskey <laughs> <laughs> wow okay there it is yeah. um okay so I'm, i've got a, a story that you'll like in fact you showed it to me um this Oh, this was cool. Tell, tell me what this is about. Um, okay, some some guy made a, uh, uh, using an Arduino, uh, made uh, an apology box, which I didn't realize was a thing until I saw this post. And I guess an apology box is something you give someone to say, I'm sorry. And it's got like Whoa. a lot of goodies in the box. So uh, this guy made one where you open it up and there's like a grass with a, a little figurine <laughs> holding a boom box uh, playing in your eyes. <laughs> oh yeah so that's I the box awesome. i don't want to play it because it's probably going to go horribly wrong on, on right Zoom right but you can imagine but, yeah, so it's just uh, peter gabriel box. in your eyes starts in playing eyes. the second you open the box and the little guy's like holding it yeah <laughs> I, I, well, I thought that was so cool i think there's something about this though like creating like a really simple little product oh, for yeah. a particular occasion and an apology box is brilliant because you can like totally personalize it to whatever it is oh yeah like i'm sorry i boffed your secretary i'm like i, I know this was <laughs> like like if we were still 
like selling bundles on Amazon. Yeah. You would totally like, that's a huge niche. Just create a bunch of apology boxes in a bundle. Like tailored to different apologies or yeah. to different... Wow. Oh, your oh my gosh. My, my mind is like ticky God that one. You're right, right. <laughs> but I mean, this is like a step up from like uh, the, the card you get with like, you know, it's got like a little animation or a music box inside. You open it up. Oh, yeah. You know, this is like a step up. Well, it, it kind box. of reminds me of like, you know, like the exploding glitter yeah. things and that, that kind of range. Like, I think people are always looking now for sort of physical gifts. So I, it's almost like we're so used to like all the digital stuff that people, okay, you're just chucking. Yeah, because I was thinking about if you created a apology jo- a box for me, it would be a little guy with like the middle finger. <laughs> I'd open it up and just see the little guy going, ah. Yeah, that's It'd be true. like, there's your apology box I, right I there. apologize for nothing. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you, you don't get any apologies from me. You were mean to me on Facebook this morning anyway. I made you coffee and you laughed at my coffee. Uh, on uh, 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 you made a latte. I made you a latte yeah. and you insulted my latte art or lack of it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I, I'm not even friends with you. I at was the moment acknowledging anyway. a work in progress. Right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I, I see how it is. You, you should be nice to the people who make your lattes. That's probably Because you true. don't know what's lurking under the froth is all I'm saying. <laughs> you, just, yeah. Watch yourself, Isaac. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> I didn't just make like threats on, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pantone. What do we think of the classic blue? I posted this in the KDP group, but I thought I'd share it here. Oh, well, no. Okay, there it is. What do we think of this color? The classic blue? Um, I, 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 I think they picked a random color and just <laughs> figured out a bunch of ways to like justify the randomness of the color. Do you think that's what they did? No, they, yeah. Well, they said it's elegant in its simplicity suggestive of the sky at dusk it's reassuring and thought-provoking this is like color theory 101 um i think it's boring <laughs> AF is my feeling but no I'm, you know actually it's kind of growing on me i've used it for a few sort of posts and things that i've done and i'm like oh actually it's not too bad it's kind of steadfast it's growing and, on you the yeah. power of suggestion I think it is though, you know, because the first, when I saw it, I was like, what? This is the most boring okay, color if, if ever. If I would have like used, in fact, I did. Yeah. I used all blue yeah, for and one I didn't of our like sites and, and you didn't like it. it. So I added yellow, which, you know, blue and yellow, you know, vibrant colors. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, that's better. Yeah. I Yeah. Susie says bo- boring blue. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm kind of. Yeah, I don't know. It's better than the living coral from last year. That was pretty horrific. <laughs> oh yeah, that so, was pretty. <laughs> yeah, they they did that awful orangey coral. Yeah, Maybe but I mean, they'll... could you expect something from like Pantone, which is like the like nerdy of the nerd when it comes to <laughs> colors? It's like, well, mm, actually, the color nerds. <laughs> I, I the, why, no, let's not let's be nice to the Pantone people. Oh yeah, I, I'm nice right? to them. Um, yeah, classic blue. There it is. Wow. Yeah. Um. So talking of things of the year. Let's, let's jump to um, Merriam-Webster. Oh, yeah. So this is kind of interesting. Merriam-Webster have done the top 10 words of the year. So the word of the year is actually really interesting. It's they. Oh, that's interesting. So that's they're, they're basically... They're signs sort of, of the times. Yeah. So they're, they're, it's kind of the, the gender neutral pronoun. And I think NB is another word. I don't know if they, oh, they mentioned non-binary, but mm-hmm. I increasingly, especially in the sort of, I would say 16 to 25, 16 to 30 bracket, I'm seeing a lot of people identifying as NB, E-N-B-Y as well. So that kind of goes with it, I guess. So you have oh, NB and they. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I, I kind of like um, how... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing at Carolyn. She's saying, um, I wouldn't say that to a person unless I want my latte poisoned. Um, <laughs> Beverly says someone's going to try and trademark that color by tomorrow. Um, yeah. So there, there, there's the word that, or are you talking about the word they? Because actually I have something really interesting that's on this page about trademarks and these words. Okay. So, okay. Non-binary they. Mm. So what's interesting, I feel like Merriam-Webster kind of, they, they try and measure the zeitgeist when they pick their words. So all the words they pick are sort of relevant to what's happened this year, like quid pro quo, um, impeach, obviously. Crawdad's an interesting one. I guess it, it, there was a book called, what was it called? It was something about crawdads. Um, oh, Where the Crawdads Sing. So that made it to the top of the New York Times bestseller list. So What's people, a crawdad? It's like a, a fishy thing, I think. It's like a crawfish. 
Oh, oh, okay. That's, so I, that's... I guess it's just another word for a crawfish. Okay. So yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that, Jad. Jad said, "Rich dad, crawl dad." <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a T-shirt right there. Uh, um, egregious. That's okay. a nice word. Okay. Uh, I'm still, that was really good. Oh Rich my god. <laughs> um, clemency. So a lot of political words. Oh, now this one's great. Okay. okay, so the Ohio State University, no, it's not Ohio State, it's the Ohio State University, um, attempted to trademark the word the. Oh, wow. Um, however, they wanted it, I, I believe that they wanted it to be trademarked uh, uh, with the pronunciation the, so it's the Ohio State University, not the Ohio State University. But they failed. It got turned down um, because they said that you couldn't put a the in and you couldn't use it that way. Um, there was actually some uh, lawyer. He explained it and he said, well, for the trademark to be registered for a brand of clothing, it must be used in a trademark fashion. In other words, it has to be used on the tags or labels for the products. Oh, so this is actually kind of an interesting yeah. um, take. This is uh, a trademark attorney called Josh Gerben. And he said uh, that a trademark must actually appear on the tags or labels for the products. Okay. It, it Just putting the word the on the front of a hat or on the front of a shirt is not sufficient for trademark use, which I think is actually a really, really interesting um, argument there that uh, people who are doing clothing and have trademark concerns um, may like to know about. So if you actually are trademarking a clothing term, mm -hmm. you should be using it on your labels and your tags and your brand, not just on the t-shirt itself. That's very so interesting. That's cool to know. Um, but yeah, they, they basically failed. They tried to trademark the word the. Now, actually I use test checks. So <laughs> no, it obviously does not, exactly. Um, well, and that's kind of a problem with yeah. USPTO is that the way the law should work and what they specify as the law is not always what happens in practice, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and a lot of words get trademarked. Well, the thing is though, it's not really that it's a problem with words being trademarked. It's more a problem with the way that Amazon uses that as fact that those words should not be used on any t-shirts. When really, it's not that you can't use a trademark. Cause like, let's think about this, like pink, apple, I don't know, there's all these colors are trademarked, loads of things are trademarked. Um, it's not so much that something's trademarked so you can't use it. It's that you can't infringe on the trademark. Right. You can't use the trademark in a way that confuses people that you're the brand. So like, for example, I probably wouldn't put like papyrus on a notebook because there's a papyrus brand of notebooks. Mm -hmm. So that would pretty much be uh, an infringement. But if I say like, this is a pink notebook, it's not really an infringement on Victoria's Secret. So anyway, I, I thought that was kind of an interesting um, little story that they tried to trademark the. That's pretty um, And I love that they just put all this emphasis on it, that you had to pronounce it as the, not <laughs> as the. Um, a few other words they had, snitty. Okay. I love this one. Oh my gosh, this is my new word of the day. Tergiversation. Okay. So a tergiversation, um, it means evasion, evasion of straightforward action or a clear cut statement. So it's kind of like when you make things complicated and confusing on purpose. It's like a to give a Oh, what which, the politicians do when they're asked a very important question. Um, that was exactly what happened. <laughs> Camp. Now, this is an interesting one. We talked about this a few, I don't know, a couple of months ago on the mm -hmm. Tangent Show um, because, and they mention it, there was a uh, art exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, so the Metropolitan Museum of Art did an event called Camp Notes on Fashion. Um, and it was all about just how campness has entered into fashion, the different fashion designers that have been inspired by sort of camp style. And I think it's probably one of the first times it's been recognized like this by the fashion industry is yeah, yeah. like not just kind of like, I feel like camp is kind of like kitsch when people mm -hmm. are just like, oh, it's a kitsch thing. It's a camp thing. Um, I think it's actually kind of interesting to like look at what is camp and how, how camp, what camp fashion is. So like, this is pretty fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of an interesting one. I think it may, we may see more things that fit into the camp, camp, mm -hmm. the camp camp um, <laughs> next year. I do think this may be like a sort of fashion style, kind of like kitsch or something like that, that we may see more of next year. So mm. that's an interesting one to watch. Oh, an exculpate is the other 
They're, a, a lot of them are very political. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like the ones that aren't political. They're kind of interesting to see. Yeah, that's 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 pretty funny. And you can see kind of what Merriam Webster are going for because this is the last. They've sort of got their last ten. They they've the kept day. it pretty clean. I follow Dictionary.com on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And it's the most passive aggressive Twitter account I think I've ever seen because every word they had word of the day is a direct response to what's happening in politics. Oh, okay. And it's done in a very, you can imagine yeah. how it's done, but They're yeah. Like, yeah, we, yeah, I, I can see that. Okay, so let me see what else have we got to share. Um, so I'm just closing some windows because I got like way too many things there. Um, oh yeah, um, actually, hold on. What do I want to talk about? Uh, I got a good one somewhere. Um, okay, I like this mm -hmm. one. This one's fun. Um, let me do a screen share back again. This is pretty cool. So um, McDonald's is installing billboards that double as tiny hotels for bees. But guess what? It's in Sweden. Oh, I know. that's pretty oh, cool. Why, why don't these happen in the US? Why? A hotel for bees. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, they make little beehives. Wow. Do their bees not sting people or attack people? Um, well, I, I guess they're in on billboards at the side of the road. Oh, so, I like, get it. You're not I really going to be like okay. going up and no, poking that, at I it. I see that. I see that. Okay. But I thought that was really cool. I would love to see. Uh, bye, Mike. Thank you for dropping in. He's in. He says it's half midnight there. Oh, wow. Oh, I guess you're in the UK. Yay. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, I assume yeah. the UK. Um, yeah, so I thought this was really sweet. That they, they, They're putting... And I love this kind of thing where people are actually doing something good and positive um, and not just like marketing. Yeah, market, that's market. really cool. Now, the only thing that I noticed that was funny is um, <laughs> that it, it said that it was an advertising company that put this idea together. So I'm like, oh, okay. I, it, it's kind of a thing. But it's done right. And right, it's, and, it's, and so that's it's it. Clever. I, it's clever. It's a good idea. And it, yeah, you know, it's it, this is one of those questions, though. It's like, when is something like exploitation or when is it like genuinely doing good? Right. You know, it's like when people like walk up to like someone who's homeless and they go, here you go, here's $10. But they make sure like they film it and put it on YouTube or something. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, is it exploitation? But then I feel like this is really, really good because if they do this, if advertising mm -hmm. companies start doing this for one company, other companies are going to want to get on board with it. It becomes a bees. thing. It becomes yeah. an initiative. And ultimately, if we end up saving the bees, then that's probably a really good thing. Yeah. yeah. Save the bees. Save the bees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else have we got? Um, oh, this guy. So, okay. This is a Japanese artist called Daisuke Samajima. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, that was I, pretty good. I, I, I tried. Um, and <laughs> oh, you know what he's doing that's really cool. So he paints these. These are like beautiful pictures he paints that look like um, that, that look like photographs. But check this out. This he, is so cool. He made a ball. And the ball has like Google Earth painted on it. Oh my gosh, that that's really, really cool. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So it like this is like a painting on it. I saw another oh there he goes, he's gonna pick it up. So you can actually like see how it works. Isn't that amazing? That's so cool. So I thought- It's like a little crystal ball. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I, I love that just for the art of it. But you know, I also, um, it kind of made me think about like what you can use sort of all the map imagery for that we have now. Like we have oh, yeah. so many, um, I don't know what the status is on Google Earth. I think it's, you can't, you can use it for some projects, like if they're, non-commercial but i don't think you can use google earth for commercial purposes i don't know that actually yeah. so i you'd have to check on that um but yeah i think it's really really neat this whole idea of like because you, you got me in um vr last week yes yes so i uh one of the things i my my pc uh my gaming pc um i've can now connect my oculus quest mm -hmm. and play uh uh rift games with it and mm -hmm. so the first thing i did was load up google earth and i had catherine uh, check out Google Earth in VR. Let's see if that unblurs. It'll unblur. Just wait a sec. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So what do you think? How was your experience using Google Earth oh, in well, VR? It was cool because you sent me to Guernsey. Oh yeah, that's so right. So that was pretty fun. Sorry, I'm trying to unblur the camera. I don't know why it went blurry on me. It should. It usually unblurs. It usually. Give it a second. <laughs> oh, there we, there we are. Um, so yeah, you sent me to Guernsey, which was really fun. <laughs> um, so I got to go back to Guernsey, which is like my home planet. Yeah. Um, and 
kind of show you where my old house was and where I went shopping and where I worked and just all that cool stuff. Um, you kind so, of feel like you're like in God mode, just flying over the earth. Yeah, huh? it's pretty weird when you're like just flying over the world and you're like, you can zoom in on anything and you're like, oh, there's our house. Yeah, oh. and like all the major cities and like monuments are in 3D. And so like I went to Sweden and I didn't realize. Did you see the bees? I did not see bees, but I didn't realize people have houses on hills. Whoa. And that was really cool to see that in 3D. That's so, pretty yeah. cool. Okay. Um, what else have we got to talk about? Oh my gosh, there's so many things. Uh oh, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Uh oh, okay. I got marketing week. So they've actually put up a year end uh post that I thought was kind of interesting. And they talk about what's oh wait am i not doing a screen share or am i screen sharing i can't tell no i'm not screen sharing um there we go um they talk about what is going right and wrong in marketing and i thought this was interesting they were pulling from the uk especially um and they said that restaurants a lot of restaurants are closing and they said that instead people are getting really into um like street food like vans like oh food wow trucks. okay and they said people are really into uber eats and uh, takeaways and there a lot of takeaways are collaborating with fast food so like they McDonald's or KFC are sort of hooking up with like DoorDash and Uber Eats and, and they're saying that's the reason why restaurants are closing down yeah what kind of restaurants are we talking about well this is mostly from the UK okay so I don't know whether the same thing is applying in the US although mm -hmm. it kind of seems possible um, but they said 1400 UK restaurants closed between 2018 and 2019 um, and a lot of them were smaller ones. There were things like Pizza Express. Uh, okay. People were redundant. Wow, they got royalty going. Wow, <laughs> well. like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, I think Jamie Oliver's restaurant closed down. Aww. So yeah, it, it's. I know. I kind of like Jamie Oliver. He, he was always trying to do sort of positive things with his restaurants. Um, but yeah, they the anti advertising advertising. So this is where it all gets really meta. And I feel like this is kind of like, yeah, well, they're saying we'll stop advertising if you keep buying. Um, if you help us reach our sales target, we'll stop interrupting your day. So it's almost like people have kind of got intellectual and sort of jumped. That feels like a very British thing. Yeah. That whole concept. I, I don't know if that would fly over here. Well, you know, it's it's kind of like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? When So like at the beginning, Arthur Dent's lying in front of a bulldozer trying to stop them from bulldozing his house. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Prosser comes along. He's like the man from the council. And he's like, no, we need to bulldoze your house. And they realize like they're at a stalemate because he's like, well, I'm going to keep lying in front of the bulldozer as long as you're here. And he's like, well, I can't. I'll bu bulldoze your house as soon as you go. So they're both just stuck there, like da 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 da. So it's like, okay, why don't we both just take a break here and just I'll go over, <laughs> I'll go to the pub and you take a break too. And I promise not to bulldoze your house while you're gone. Um, and I feel like this is kind of like people are over being tricked and sort of manipulated. And this kind of goes back to the, you know, like Yukai Chu. We talked. Um, Last year at ASD or this year at mm -hmm. ASD, we talked about gamification. Yes. And yes. there's a guy called Yu Kai Chu, and he writes about gamification. And he created this system called Octalysis. And what he did was he kind of analyzed white hat game methods and black hat game methods. And black hat game methods are all kind of rooted in manipulation. Like they make you feel kind of icky. And that's like where scarcity and stuff like that is like, we're selling, I don't know, we're selling tickets, but only for the next three hours and doors shut in three hours. And then we're going to raise the prices. And you're sort of driven by fear and anxiety and fear of missing out, scarcity, all of those things. Those tend to come into like black hat game tactics, mm -hmm. whereas like very um, like the, the white hat tactics are more where you come to it very consensually, very you're, like you go to the game mm -hmm. and you're very excited about playing the game. You want to join in and you have a lot of space for creativity and you're very happy to be playing it. And I feel like people are catching on to the difference like they don't want advertising that makes them feel icky they want advertising now, that they feel good about isn't this black hat in disguise <clears throat> well yeah everything because is. i mean they how are they really good i mean what what measurement are they using to monitor how many <laughs> like what's the number of sales they need to get before they stop marketing 
Oh, sorry, I just spoke my um, because they don't make that very clear. Mm -hmm. So if you go out and buy a drink, like you're you're supposedly aiding to them not advertising <laughs> you anymore, right? Like it's it's just a lie. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, they, it's kind of funny. They said critics worried it was self defeating in incentivizing customers to put a stop to its campaign. They're perpetuating the disquiet about advertising. So I don't know. Is the is it is the trick to like celebrate advertising and say look you love this advert it's telling you like adverts can be good if they actually tell you about the thing oh you know the the girl in the exercise bike adverts so i think last week we talked about the peloton advert oh yeah 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 yeah. so they were making these exercise um <laughs> oh thank you frank um i can i can uh, oh i don't know how to put that through oh there we go um Oh, Frank said something less. No, okay, so the, the Peloton, um, the exercise bikes, um, she, the, the girl in the advert, they said the, the guy bought her an exercise bike for mm -hmm. Christmas and like, oh, here's your Peloton exercise bike. And she's like, oh, thank you. And then she like exercises. Um, apparently they, a gin company picked up the same actress um, and got her to make an advert about gin. But I haven't seen it yet. So <laughs> I, I heard it's pretty funny and it's like, it's kind of like a counter trend yeah, yeah, yeah. to um, the, the exercise. Um, I, 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 I think the way to go about it is to make marketing fun and entertaining where, yeah, we are selling you a product, but you're being entertained, having fun and enjoying it in the process. And we're honest and you're being honest yeah. about it. And you're yeah. just like, okay, this, and I, again, that kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show, what we were talking about with um, how the world kind of needs less marketing and more innovation and create creativity and problem solving. So it's like, if you can solve a problem, if you can create something, if you can innovate, the marketing kind of handles a lot of itself. Like it doesn't do all, like you still need to market but it becomes so much easier when you actually have something good to market. And I think that's kind of, I feel like people need to focus more on the creativity and oh, absolutely. learning and the, to make things and innovate and the on quality, things. Right. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm pretty happy. I think people who, who we've been working with, I'm seeing amazing things, but our KDP people are working on some awesome books. Yeah. Really yeah. creative ideas. Um, cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's more on here. You can read the article. I thought it was kind of an interesting one. It talks about WeWork as well um, and some of the companies that haven't done so well this year. But it's like, if you're interested in just what businesses are doing well, what's popular, um, this Marketing Week article is kind of a good roundup. So I Ooh. saw that there. Um, do you want to do Nerd Corner? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you want to start with yeah. that one? Yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, for Nerd Corner, I wanted to talk about some free online uh, photo editors that you guys can use for your projects. And uh, this one uh, came into our, my radar uh, recently, and uh, I, I thought it was awesome. So it's called Pixel R, and uh, they have an, a free online tool, which is like a very simple version of Photoshop. And this feels more like Photoshop than most tools I've seen. Uh, here you can, uh, it's so cool. I mean, like, you can, so this is free. It's free to use, yeah. And here I am using the blur blur tool, which is something that's very Photoshoppy. Whoa, so um, I can I start it. blurring out the background and make something like a fake depth of field mm -hmm. kind of effect or even tilt shift. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. And so there's a lot of options. Uh, that's for got photo. a lot of features for a free tool. Yes, yes. And you can uh, resize uh, images. Um, here, so again, if you scale them up, they're gonna look mm -hmm. pixelated because uh, no software is, is that great where it can scale things up magically uh, without it looking pixelated. Can you make covers? Yes, I believe you can. Um, I The highest I did was 5,000. I haven't actually tested it for the eight and a half by mm -hmm. 11, but I imagine you can. Um, but it's great if you just need to make a simple edit, you need to, you have a photo you wanna uh, manipulate, you wanna crop, resize, this is a really great way uh, to do that. And then you can download your image. And uh, for those of you that if you have tangent templates, uh, we have an image to PDF converter. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can take advantage of that to create your interior mm -hmm. files. Um, or you can uh, use, you know, another a free server such as I love PDF uh, to see about converting images into PDFs. That's so awesome. yeah, but really, so what's really this cool. Called? This is called Pixlr. Mm -hmm. It's called Pixel R. So uh, dot P -I -X -L -R. Com. X L R dot com. Uh, slash e. I'm gonna so actually I'll, I'll put, the, you put the URL in there. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. type it here so people can see. Pixelr. 
Come on. There we go. Yes. And you want the slash E at the end. Well, they'll see it on the homepage. Oh, okay. Click on it. But anyways, yeah. And so um, I tested this on my Chromebook. I have a new Chromebook and it works great on a Chromebook. So that's, uh, I was like, this is I think the Chromebook cool thing's pretty amazing. So oh, you've been yeah. making books on, and how much is the Chromebook? It was like, it was, a, it was about $120. Wow. So you can make books on a $120 Chromebook. Yeah. And you can publish them on KDP. Yeah. It's like, it's really easy to get into this now to like start. Yeah. Like so, so my workflow, cause I was just curious, can I make an into a book um, using a hundred dollar Chromebook, you know? And I, I went on Canva to create the cover worked fine. And then mm -hmm. uh, I went to tangent templates, used a few of our interior files. I also used our new interior designer uh, to create some custom custom uh, templates and then use the builder tool to merge it all together and I have my cover and my interior file ready to upload to KDP. That's pretty awesome. Everything works great and then also the listing helper because uh, Chrome, the Chromebooks uh, is full Chrome so you have access to all your extensions uh, unlike on like uh, an iPad or an iPhone. So yeah. <clears throat> Do you want to show the other tool? Oh well? yeah yeah so there's another one. Uh, so this is one it's called uh, Pixel R. The other one is called Photo P. I've seen this mentioned a few times in the group, but I haven't played with it. Yet. Yes. And so Photo P, it's a little bit more powerful. Um, I was using it. Uh, you might get, have some success. Um, I was stress testing it and I noticed that it, it's a, definitely a memory hog. So there, okay. it's a little, it felt a little more limited. Um, it's got more features, but as you start using these advanced features, you're going to notice uh, uh, it freezing up. Because uh, that's just the nature of web applications. This is pretty amazing. So, so there's yeah. two really powerful graphics tools that you can use completely free. Are they, they're, they're free? Yeah, they're free. Um, yeah. Completely free online. Photo P. I don't, is it Photo P or Fo Photopia? Or I, I honestly don't. Photo I, P. I would just say Photo P. I actually don't know. Cool. Yeah. So there's Photo P and there is Pixlr as well. So, yeah. so a few go. more alternatives. Uh, Canva is great for creating designs. Um, but it is a little bit lacking when it comes to photo editing. Well, the thing with Canva, Canva is not, so I, I mean, I, I love Canva because mm -hmm. it tends to suit the type of work I do a lot. Um, Canva is not really like a drawing tool. You can't really no. draw or like manipulate photos. You can put basic filters on them, things like that, but you can't really um, like do anything advanced with Canva like that. But what Canva is really good at is just a collaging tool that yes. lets you put pictures together um it lets you put an idea down quickly and it has really simple design features like you can put i don't know a pretty border on something you can it gives you templates with good sort of typography um so canva's really really good for things like that but and it's they not also really hold your hand in the design process yeah and i no other program i've seen matches what canva has done it helping you to come up with good looking designs. Like it's designs. easy to look good when you right. do something in Canva. Uh, in any of, of Adobe products, um, they don't help you. They give you the tools, but mm -hmm. you're on your own as far as coming up with good design. Um, so yeah. So lots, lots of options for um, your books or your shirts or whatever else you are um, designing for. Cool, okay. Um, oh, I had, let me uh, jump. I had a little niche hunting that I thought was kind of neat. It was a site that I'd forgotten about actually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica have a really cool website. Um, and they have some really interesting stuff like facts. They have WT facts. Um, Wait, is that like like W? I know, I don't really understand. It's like, <laughs> what the fact? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I, I, it's British. It's, you know, oh, okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, I, this really got my brain ticking, just kind of going through this. Cause I was finding like, um, I, things like public domain stuff, like works of art and like these, like musicians and people I hadn't heard of queen Elizabeth's court occultist, oh. um, beyond Venus fly traps. So you've got like carnivorous plants. Uh, like there are so many cool things here that I thought you could totally turn into books or you can mix in with your books. Oh, famous mustaches in history. There's your, <laughs> your idol. <laughs> um, you've got Dickens, most famous mm -hmm. uh, characters. Uh, why haven't you got a darling mustache yet? <laughs> like, it, it, it doesn't make sense. I may need to glue it on. I don't know if I can actually grow <laughs> a full mustache. I don't know. I've never tried, but. Oh, but like, look at this. Gilles de Ray, history's first serial killer. Oh, like okay. that's such that's a huge really, niche. Like, yeah. I, I know um, Amy and Springer has her She Sleuths podcast. Right, right. It's like such a huge niche in the mind for like true crime, serial killers, 
we did true crime in our curate group. Yes, we, we have did. A, we have a class on making true crime books in yeah. curate. So if you're in curate, do check that out. Um, mm. But, you know, I, I just like browsing through this because I felt this tapped so this many niches. It's pretty cool. This the is. Doomsday Fortress filled with seeds. I've heard of that, actually. It's like they, they keep all these seeds in case like there's a huge apocalypse and they have to like reseed the world. Um, yeah. But I mean, a lot of like prepping uh, groups, people are really into like prepping and I don't know. So uh, th anyway, I thought th this was really fun. There's loads of other stuff on here as well. They have on this day as well. Oh, that's pretty and cool. And I think we've talked about this before with another site, but what you can do with like on this day, if you're creating planners, like this is a gold mine, find some facts about what happened each day. Like go and pick your favorite fact and you can add those to your planners or you could add a couple. Yeah, yeah. You could do like, if you don't want to do 365, you could do like on in this week and you could pick like your three favorite things from each week. There you go, 52 facts, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. So the, and there's a lot of ways you can use this. Like, it, or the other way you can use this is you can create birthday books Mm -hmm. So what you do is you make, so I guess you make 365 books, you make a book for each birthday. And in each one, you could have like a list of famous people born on this day, okay. um, things that happened on this day, yeah. like you could, and you can make like a journal. So you put your own sort of, you can put blank space in there, space for them to write in, you could put prompts in there, but you could also mix in facts about this day. So you can make like, um, like a birthday book. So That's pretty, pretty cool. Neat. Yeah. Um, cool okay oh i had one, one more. more oh this is this is great <laughs> except people always get mad at me when i talk about things like this so we'll see <laughs> look oh, at this yes this is the world's this... biggest ouija board yes oh my god sign gosh. me up it was uh, it, you you missed it unfortunately <laughs> they they only put it up for halloween um did they have another picture oh there's the other picture of it how cool is that that's pretty cool. they turned this huge area in salem massachusetts into a giant Ouija board. And guess what? It didn't open a portal to hell. And that, well. <laughs> they weren't doing it right. They didn't say the right things. They didn't. Like, I feel right. All the people who've like complained at me over the years of like talking about Ouija boards on like mm -hmm. treasure hunting. I'm like, oh, guys, I found this Ouija board at a yard sale. And people are like, no, Catherine, you will unleash the demons. Well, of remember hell. we went to a restaurant and this lady, the, the, oh, yeah, the waitress flipped on us because you had a shirt with the Ouija board. And she's like, oh, Ouija, Ouija. She was like very she superstitious really, she about like, it. She told me off about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that was. <laughs> I, I, well, here's the thing. I feel like if, if you, if the portal of hell is going to be opened from yeah. like a t-shirt, then like this is going to like open some massive like worm. Oh yeah, yeah. Into the, like, yeah. whoa. Well, this is this is like the, um, like an Elder Scroll game. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was cool. So there we go. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, I haven't been eaten by a demon quite yet. Yes. Oh, take I think me to oblivion. Oh, the last thing I had. This is great. This is like Elon Musk paranoia, like level. Wait, what is this? This is like all the terrible things about AI. <laughs> now, I, I know you're a big pro proponent of um, AI and machine learning yes. and all of this exciting yes. stuff. Also giant Ouija boards. And giant Ouija boards. And giant Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, oh, hey, look, Stevie's here. Hey Stevie. hey, Stevie. Stevie is our friend from Improv, so yeah. very nice to see you, Stevie. Um, Frank says, sorry, what is the current site? Um, I, I don't know which one you were asking oh. about, Frank. Um, was it one of the uh, graphics sites? There was Photo P, uh, and, which is Photo P, P-E-A, and there was Pixlr, which we posted a link to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, okay, this was a Medium article someone wrote. Yeah complaining about AI and tracking all the ways AI has been used for evil over the last year. Whoa. So um, it, it's actually kind of disturbing when you start reading. So I was thinking this the other night, like I was taking a picture of you in a restaurant and it started like putting squares around the people who are in the background. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, this is pretty crazy. So you can start doing all the um, facial recognition on just random people who are in the same location as you like I, yeah that's pretty and i was and and they mentioned ring on here somewhere they mm. talked about ring doorbells and i was like thinking about this so did you know that ring have filed for a patent to match ring doorbell videos to facial recognition databases no i didn't which not know i that. think is pretty interesting. pretty interesting so basically if you have 
um, a ring doorbell and it's videoing people, I think what's going to happen in the next few years, you're probably going to get a list of all the people who've walked past your house. Whoa. That's my guess. Like, that's where that's... I see this going. Like, that's what I would do if I was uh, In theory, in theory, although uh, facial recognition software has some serious issues, especially for people like me, minorities. <laughs> they usually picked you up, are they? Uh, well, right, but they've had issues with people um, because a lot of the testing is done uh, by the people who create them, which is, you know, What's predominantly really white is, males. Yeah, that's and true. It is an issue with AI. And so they're, they, in fact, I saw an article the other day, they need more women and minorities working in AI because there's like a huge. Oh, wow. Just to create yeah, samples. Yeah. I was just posting the link for Frank. Yeah. He asked what size um, is. On another note, I do feel like uh, this is um, uh, season, the, the next season of Black Mirror. <laughs> they laid it right out. I there. think they laid it right out, wow. right? Yeah, well, and actually, that's kind of an interesting point yeah. because I mean, a lot of the people watching are either product creators, marketers, people who are putting together um, content. There's some really interesting content that you can tap in this. Like yeah. they break it down into things like surveillance, facial recognition, tech and climate, workers and how workers are treated, bias and discrimination, because that's obviously kind of. Um, an issue like you were just talking about actually um, but yeah this is going to be and I think the other issue with AI too is also along with facial recognition is deep fake yes where you can replace someone's face with someone else's now if the quality gets good enough uh, you won't be able to distinguish what's real and what's not I feel like we're all moving towards some sort of like cyberpunk Blade runner future where we all have to go around oh, with like no. masks and balaclavas <laughs> on in the future. Just so we'll get like minority report. We'll all have like retina replacements and stuff. So people what, don't know. What about in countries where people cover their faces? I mean, they, they have to. Well, that's, that, yeah, that's I mean, true. Right. Well, in some European countries, they've banned that and they've, they're trying to say that they don't want anyone covering their faces even for like. Or what if there's special makeup you can wear? Oh, to disguise your face. That's kind of cameras. like the human equivalent of like the people who put like glazes on the license plates and stuff. Yes. Oh, you're thinking. I'm just. They're going to be onto you, don't you? Can't <laughs> say this on with with. Oh, I'm on a green card. You can't say things like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. FBI. Yeah, Lovely. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um. Okay. <laughs> um. I think I'm done. Okay, I think that's cool. all the things I have to talk about today. Um. Oh, I had one other one. Hold on, let me bring oh, it up did. if I can find it. Um, yeah, let, this was a good one. Oh, I found it. Okay, I had one more as we were talking about things this year. Um, the Lost Colony book I, wait, by no. R.G. Riddler. Wait, okay. that, what? Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Yeah. Susie's suggesting a book, The Lost mm -hmm. Colony book. I, I will cool. have to put um, that in my reading list. Oh, yeah, Melinda's saying apple suey. Wait, it got activated by the sound of a zipper. That's just, you know, it's like when like Alexa randomly talks to you and you're like, I wasn't talking to you. And she just suddenly out of the blue just goes, I can't help you with that. And you're like, whoa. whoa oh, yeah. That? Yeah. Same yeah. with Alexa. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. So popular science. Oh, yeah. This is my last post. My last um, thing I had to share. They've put out the top 100 innovations from this year. And it's actually really interesting to uh, browse through it. Um, so it starts with a lot of uh, medical things mm -hmm. um, that are actually pretty cool. Like they have uh, a new drug that they think can reduce peanut allergies. They say it can't cure them, but it can reduce them. There it is. Um, they're trying to do uh, marijuana roadside tests. They've got a new tool for that, um, which, oh, there it is, which it's kind of an interesting one because my understanding with like marijuana is that it's in your system for like literally days. Yeah. So the problem they have, and they've actually done these before, they made like marijuana tests. Um, what they can't test for is impairment. So oh, they can say, okay. well, you have marijuana in your system, but I think legally they've had a problem proving that people are impaired. So mm. this doesn't quite solve that problem yet. Oh, Frank says I had just literally activated his Alexa. Oh, and you just did it too. <laughs> Let's just keep saying Alexa. And we'll... Wait, Alexa, play <laughs> Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Ashley. <laughs> wow, you're welcome. Yes, um, you're, you're a terrible person. What, what's, Thank what's, you. what's this? This is cool. Oh, the vibe. Yeah, that thing's, okay, that thing's pretty cool. Okay, the vibe. Um, yeah. uh, okay, what's cool? Oh, Alexa's now playing Rick Ashley. Alexa, stop. Great, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, let's see. Um, I trolled myself. You trolled yourself. Yeah. Hey, 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 did you see that? Yeah, yeah I yeah, saw yeah. that. Yeah. The Oculus yeah. Quest, I know. <laughs> you, you. Um, Adobe have got Fresco now, painting app. Yeah. Um, you need an iPad to use it. It's pretty restricted on what tools you can, what you can use it on, but you can use it on an iPad. Yeah. So it's for a tablet. Um, and it's kind of neat. You can paint on it. So that's Adobe Fresco. Um, I'm just browsing through this mm -hmm. really quickly, but you guys can go visit it for yourself and check through it. But there's some pretty cool cars. Um, whoa, that's a neat bike. You could ride that around in your like dystopian future while wearing gas masks. Live wire. Wow, Harley Davidson made an electric bike. Does it have the sound? Their patented sound <laughs> oh on the God. electric bike. Our neighbor has a Harley. <laughs> Our next door neighbor has a Harley and he leaves for work so early in the morning. And all you hear is like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're I like know. oh my God. <laughs> it's the equivalent of having a rooster next door, which is illegal to have around here. It, it so. is. Yeah, I know. I, I can California is amazing. It's like you, you've got like legal drugs and illegal roosters. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so there you go. You can go check out the most um, innovative inventions. There's something I wanted oh, to share. Oh, that's like our bed. Oh, it is. It's, yeah. Yeah. Wiffle, wiffle, that's, um, I don't know. Oh, mirror. These are cool. I oh, the magic one mirrors. Of those okay. That you can like do classes and the mirror teaches you. There's like an instructor in the mirror. Whoa. So that's pretty neat. Anyway, so there it is. It's um, Popular Science, Best of What's New 2019. I'll post it in the chat so okay. people can check it out for themselves. Okay, so I think we are done for yeah. today. Um, gosh, we talked about a lot of things. Um, so we said happy birthday, Isaac. We said happy birthday to Barbara Bailey. Um, we looked at the apology books, the Arduino apology box. That was mm -hmm. kind of fun. Um, we looked at the new tangent template update. You can now use, uh, you can now create planners in what, seven languages, eight languages? Seven, um, seven, seven languages. Seven languages. Yes. Um, Finally, do, language support to all our daily. There's planners. language support in all of our planners now, weekly, monthly, daily. Um, and you can also change the time and date formats in those as well. Yeah. So it's like fully globalized. Um, we looked at, we went niche hunting on Encyclopedia Botanica. We looked at Fiverr and what industries are now on Fiverr. Uh, we, we looked at the evils of AI. Um, we looked at why oh, the Ohio State <laughs> University couldn't trademark the uh, McDonald's is saving bees. Japanese artists painted um, a ball a with a yeah. Google Earth. Um, there was a giant Ouija board and Marketing Week um, talked. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to say. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I just remembered something about the Marketing Week article that I wanted to talk about. Um, so in the Marketing Week article, we talked about how they've been closing down restaurants yes. and instead street food and delivery is more popular mm -hmm. so there's a thing like improv classes they say if this is true then what else is true so like if you're doing like an improv scene and you have like a man who's uh, i don't know afraid of kites mm -hmm. then maybe he's also afraid of airplanes or maybe he's afraid of birds like sure. he's just afraid of everything that flies mm -hmm. um so i was thinking about like the marketing week article and i was like well if this is true then what else is true like if restaurants if people don't want to go to restaurants anymore and they instead they want delivery food what else is true? What People else? are lazy AF. Right. Well, yeah, but so that's, sure. that's well, actually true. Right. But what other things can people have delivered to them that mm. haven't been? So I thought that was interesting. And I also thought street food, especially. So like food trucks are huge. What else can you sell out of a truck? Are there other things that you can sell that are mobile that come to people other than like water and food? And speakers. And speakers? <laughs> yeah. Wait, how do you sell speakers? <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. Um, no, no, no. But like, think about that. I, I don't know. What what else could you sell? I bet in California, they'd probably have like marijuana trucks before any time. Oh my gosh, I um, could totally see that. Um, well, you got the treasure truck. Amazon's treasure taking truck. advantage yeah, of it. And true. they completely gamified the whole thing. That's true. As well. like, I get a text every morning. The treasure truck is parked outside bombs. And okay, you can come okay, and get so, some goodies. So, 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 okay, let, let's, let's, let's position yourself. Okay, think about an ice cream truck. Yeah. They travel every day at the same time and they and they come with goodies. Okay, uh, suppose an ice cream truck is not selling ice cream. Mm -hmm. What would you put in an ice cream Susie truck? Susie just had a good one, pharmacy products. Drugs? Yeah, because that's actually like a lot of people who need pharmacy, especially are kind of older or have um, mobility issues. So like pharmacy makes a lot of sense. 
books. Jim, did you? So in England, they used to have book libraries. They had mobile book libraries. I can see and that. And they would book. bring books to you. Lattes. Coffee. L coffee. I, I, that would be so awesome if you had a, a, a truck that came by every day at the same time and they just stop at like the corner mm -hmm. of your neighborhood a or your block and then you can go out and get a fresh cup of latte. Nice. And you don't have to worry about Starbucks and it comes to what? you. Are you saying my lattes are good enough? No, no. We have an awesome espresso I, machine. I see how but it, it is. just arrived. Mm -hmm, but prior mm -hmm, to that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got to work on your art. So you want basically a latte truck that makes beautiful latte art. Yeah, I, I want the I, traveling I barista. The traveling barista. Yeah, who comes with like gourmet coffee. You better watch your latte. I just, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. All right, guys, thank you for joining us for another week. Um, I oh, wait, 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 wait. Someone asked a question. I don't. I want to, uh, Frank, he had a question. Okay, uh, if, if you have a question about tangent templates, uh, the best thing to do right now is to contact me, email me at support at tangent.rocks and um, I'm a little behind so uh, please be patient uh, but I will reply back to you and help you out whatever you need help with. Support at tangent.rocks we are always happy to help. Mm -hmm. All right guys have a good week <laughs> we love you we'll be back next Tuesday to talk to you same time 4 p.m California time. All right guys bye.